with exactly the right remix of fresh and nostalgia, you might call this one The Air Force Awakens. <laughs> Navy, not Air Force. Are they particular about that distinction? Oh, my. But in all seriousness, what you've heard is true. Top Gun Maverick is effectively 2022's answer to Creed, a film that is unreasonably better than it has any right to be, given that it's a sequel to a movie about handsomely chiseled stars flying fighter jets really, really fast and really nothing else that defined the concept of style over substance in its own era and owes its existence to Generation X and late millennial nostalgia, not so much for the original Top Gun itself, but for the vibe persons of my generation associate with Top Gun, namely the theme music, the dangers own song Danger zone. The general, we were too young to realize the problematic aspects of this hardware heavy patriotism of the Reagan era, everyone thinking they were the first person in their friend group to hilariously grok that the volleyball scene was kinda gay, right? Because there was no internet, and above all else, being one of the first grown-up-ish action movies you had in common with your dad, which secondarily means this will probably be a double nostalgia ticket as the only movie that a significant chunk of 65 and over crowd heads out to this whole summer, especially since Yellowstone isn't putting out any new episodes till November. Bottom line, kids, just be understanding of all of the people with varying shades of gray in their hair who need a moment when they realize Miles Teller is actually supposed to be playing Goose's son in the- oh, shit, there I go. <clears throat> Anyway, our premise this time is that Tom Cruise is a 59-year-old man fighting a never-ending battle against the concept of time and natural human limitations who finds himself pulled back into the Top Gun program as the last logical step in a series of increasingly dangerous, life-threatening stunts wherein he nearly dies, pushing himself to the limits of human endurance simply to prove that he can, but enough about the making of the film, eh? 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 But no, the actual plot is that Pete Maverick Mitchell is drafted as a new teacher at the Navy Fighter School because a top-priority secret mission to take out a target of interest in enemy territory, as with the original film, the enemy here is nameless and unidentified. Uh, whoever they are, the target is someplace snowy and mountainy. They use a mix of brand new but also very old weaponry, so I guess we're at war with North Russia, Iran? I don't know, it's not really important. That requires a group of ultra-high skilled but also young and ultra unbattle tested pilots to be trained to pull off a near impossible sneak attack bombing raid, basically a real life Death Star trench run, and the Navy thinks only Maverick is capable of imparting such skills in the time allotted. Complicating matters is that one of the prospective hotshots is Miles Teller's aforementioned Rooster Bradshaw, the now adult son of Maverick's deceased wingman Goose from the first movie who is still nursing a grudge. But not necessarily the grudge you might be thinking. Uh, how does this go? It's a Top Gun sequel. You know how that's gonna shake out. They don't get along, they do cool plane stuff, and play a game on the beach until they do get along, things get hashed out, there's intricately choreographed Graph jet stun sequences of decreasing believability until it turns into a straight out action movie for Act 3. Uh, oh, Jennifer Connelly is in this one. Because Kelly McGillis doesn't really do movies anymore, so Connelly is a brand new character who we're told Maverick had this whole long history with for a bunch of imaginary sequels they didn't make between the first one and this one. Uh, okay, look, it's an extremely thin narrative just like the first one, but damn it, they do the Top Gun music, airplane go whoosh, and I'm 40. I had a good time with it. I don't have to justify every one of these, do I? I mean, spoiler alert, if you're under 30, you're not that far off from a 70-year-old Vin Diesel coming back after like 20 years for Still Fast or Last of the Furious or whatever, so uh, get ready. It'll happen to you. But yeah, 7 out of 10, I was feeling it.